Why don't phones charge instantly? Think of charging as filling a bathtub with water. It takes some time, and the more powerful the flow of water, the faster the tub will be filled. But if the stream is too strong, it can damage the enamel on the tub due to high pressure. With phones, it's the same. If the power surge is too much, the battery might go out of order. Why don't cell phones work on the subway? You might have noticed that even above ground you sometimes get bad reception. It's because there's some hard obstacle interfering with the signal coming from the nearest cell tower. If there's a wall or, say, a large block of lead in the signal's way, it will be partially lost. So it's only natural that underground, where there's a thick layer of ground between you and the towers, you'll hardly get any reception at all. Why is there no night vision mode on smartphones? Because you probably won't be happy with how huge and expensive your smartphone becomes with this feature. To make good quality videos in the dark, a phone must have a really big sensor to catch as much light as possible, and infrared technology to boot. These combined would make the phone both oversized and overpriced. Why don't phones interfere with each other's signals? To be fair, they sometimes do, but only when there are too many phone talks around. Normally, they have several ways to separate frequencies and can use them at the same time if need be. And you surely won't hear anyone else's talk while on the phone today. This was the landline issue gone with the mobile era. Why do phones overheat? Most common reasons are power-greedy apps, too many apps open at the same time, exposure to direct sunlight, and, surprisingly, holding the phone in your hand too tightly. If the temperature of your phone gets high, it can deplete the battery sooner than you'd like, so keep it cool and comfy. Why Androids may sometimes not receive texts from iPhones This usually happens when you switch from iPhone to Android. Blame the iMessage service, which is an exclusive iOS feature and isn't supported by Android devices. The Apple website says you should first insert the SIM card back into your iPhone, turn off and deregister iMessage, and only then transfer the SIM card to your new Android device. Why don't phones come rooted by default? In most phones, to get root access, you need to perform some manipulations that void the warranty of your phone, so only the most advanced users dare to do it. And phone manufacturers aren't planning on giving this access freely because they won't be able to protect your data. For the same reason, third-party apps aren't allowed to be installed by default. Why do so many phones have a glass back? The main reason is the cost. It's just cheaper to make the back of a phone from glass than aluminum. But there's also a practical side, because metal back phones can't use the wireless charging feature. Why do phones need multiple cameras? Standalone DSLR cameras allow for a larger sensor, which is responsible for capturing light. Smartphones can't afford one big sensor for fear of becoming too bulky, so they make use of several cameras at once. The second camera supports and improves the quality of the shot made by the first one, and so on. Why do you sometimes receive ads about things you didn't type or said to your mobile assistant? <laughs> I bet you've been there when you talk to your friend about wanting to buy, say, a bicycle, and after an hour, you see tons of bike ads on your smartphone. You talk in person, and you never search for a bike on the internet, yet there it is. Although there's still no hard proof that your smartphone passively listens to you, an experiment made in 2018 was pretty convincing. It does. If you don't want it to collect marketing info about you, turn off the mic for good. Why do you need airplane mode on board a plane? When airplane mode is off, your phone continues passively searching for cell networks, sending out signals. Pilots say even one phone can create static on their radio, which is not critical, but unpleasant. But if there are 50 people on board using their phones at once, they can totally disrupt the airplane's radio. And that, as you may guess, is a huge problem for everyone. Why are smartphones so similar? You might argue they have different looks and insides, but let's admit it, most of the phones have more or less the same functionality. That's because when one manufacturer adds some novelty, everyone else tries to follow suit, and as a result, we basically get tons of clones. The only difference between makes and models is their cost, 
which depends on how expensive the parts are. On that note, why are phones getting even pricier? It's quite common that newer and better stuff is more expensive. But with phones, it's especially true. The flagship models may cost as much as $1,500 today. Again, it mostly depends on the costly and hard-to-get parts. If you want a state-of-the-art, hyper-efficient device, you'll have to cash in a hefty sum for the best parts possible. Why are they called cell phones anyway? Because they use so-called cells to send and receive information. A cell is a unit of coverage in a cellular network. On a diagram, one cell would look like a hexagon that includes a tower and some area that it covers. When your phone connects to another tower, it means you go from one cell to another. Why can't phone batteries be removed any longer? A removable battery is convenient if yours is becoming too worn to hold a charge for long. You can just replace it with a new one. But it also takes a lot of valuable space inside the phone, which can be used for adding functionality. Also, a removable battery can only be rectangular for convenience, while a non-removable one can take any shape, even a really weird one. It helps get more juice in it, too. Why are phones so big nowadays? Some time ago, really big phones were called phablets, a cross between a phone and a tablet. Today, though, this term is obsolete, because phones are getting even bigger anyway. Larger screen means better viewing of images and movies, as well as better gaming experience and even navigation, though holding such a slab in one hand proves awkward indeed. Why do you need earphones to listen to radio? The built-in antenna in a smartphone is just about an inch long or even shorter. It's enough to catch communication signals, but radio needs a longer wire for quality sound. So basically, if you attach a long enough piece of metal to your phone, it will do just as good. But then you have headphones for that. Why do phones tell you to hold still while taking night shots? In night mode, the camera takes lots of shots in a quick succession and blends them into one that is of better quality. So if you move your phone while it's working, it will take fewer shots and the resulting picture will be worse than it could have been. Why do phones charge slower when it's cold? Battery charging is a chemical reaction, and it needs certain conditions for best performance. When it's too cold, molecules inside the battery move slower, and the reaction takes more time. On the other hand, if it's too hot, the reaction might become too fast, damaging the battery. Why are smartphone screens so easy to clean compared to laptop ones? Any touchscreen is covered with an oil-repelling solution. Our fingers have sweat glands on them, and screen manufacturers always have that in mind. Since you don't touch laptop screens as often, it doesn't need this protective covering.